Hi everybody, I'm Mark Dunham, Executive Chef for the Atherton Hotel and Ranchers Club on OSU campus. Today we're standing outside the Food Pyramid here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. This show is all about making cooking fun, easy, and delicious. So we're going to start with the basics about how to shop for your refrigerator and your pantry right here on Play With Your Food. Let's go inside. So now that we're inside the store, most grocery stores are set up in very similar fashion. So we're, we're on the outskirts of the store in the produce aisle. This is, in my opinion, where you need to spend a lot of your time and money. And a lot of people have a lot of questions about what to buy. It's real simple. You buy stuff that you like. You buy stuff that you can afford. You buy stuff that looks good. Don't overcomplicate it and try to get worried about whether it's necessarily organic or not organic. You know what your family needs. You know what your family eats. So you buy what you like. I personally like a lot of herbs. so. I'm going to grab some herbs. It's summertime, so even the grocery stores are stocking things that are in season. Peppers are really available. We've got a lot of asparagus, asparagus uh, lots of field greens, things like that. I love peppers. My family loves peppers, so we're going to grab a few of those. And again, it doesn't really matter which type you like. Just grab them, and we'll figure out what to do with them later. The asparagus is looking really nice, so I'm going to grab some asparagus. This is easy to cook. It's really good for your family. Looks like it's a good price. Don't buy this stuff in the wintertime necessarily. It's a little expensive, but this is good for now. Eggplant. Eggplant in the summertime, really good buy. There's lots of stuff we can do with this. We can roast it, cut it into bite-sized pieces, puree it. This is a really good value. Your kids may not like it, but we can try it. Give it a try. Grab a couple of pieces of this without knocking everything off the shelf. Some of these banana peppers look pretty good too. And I think I actually need a little bit of ginger to finish the lobster special for tonight at the restaurant. So I'm going to grab a couple of pieces of this. And then I think one more thing over here in the potato aisle. All right, so the last thing we're going to pick up are some potatoes. Lots of kind of potatoes. The potatoes we're going to grab here are Idaho's. Uh, since we're talking about potatoes next week and real simple potato preparations, we're going to grab a few of these. All right, we are in the aisle where we are going to shop for some grains, some rice, and some pasta. Two things that I think you always need to have in your cabinet, rice and pasta. They're quick, they're inexpensive, they're really good for you. When you step into these aisles, there are so many different choices. You've got all these bottled choices, uh, fancy packaging, things like that. I generally go for what I shop for at the restaurant, uh, inexpensive, straightforward, packaged rice. I've got white rice here, I've got brown rice. Today I'm probably going to choose the brown rice because I like whole grains. Um, it's good for you. It, it takes a little bit of different cooking, but it's a little bit more tasty in the end. Uh, and then we've got, well, I might just go ahead and grab some white rice because we'll talk about how quickly white rice cooks up later. All right, so for pasta, it's, it's pretty much the same with rice. The way I shop is a lot of these pastas are going to end up tasting the same. So why spend a whole lot more money on one with fancier packaging, but, you know, marketing works. So what I normally buy is one type of like spaghetti or fettuccine. So we've got spaghetti here, decent package, like a pound, it's like 235s. You can feed a family really quickly with that. And then I like to get some sort of shape. Um, generally, I like to get penne, but I'm having it, there it is. Get a box of penne, this cooks up real nice. It's really easy for pasta salads, tomato sauce, things like that. All right, so now we're in the oil aisle. And for me at home, there's a couple of things that you need in terms of oil. You need an inexpensive everyday cooking oil, which I find canola oil is really good for that. So we're going to grab some canola oil. It's high in monounsaturated fats, which is good for your family. It's inexpensive. It takes heat really well, so it doesn't scorch. And then you need something a little more refined in terms of flavor and things like that for salads and finishing oils. And you can see there is a ton of different olive oils here. And again, this is a matter of, if you know a lot about olive oil, then you can start to get picky. If you don't know a lot about olive oil, the best thing to do is just to start trying. Uh, there's tons of marketing schemes in terms of the bottles. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. I, you know, sometimes just come and grab the least expensive one. Uh, this time, I think, however, I'm going to grab Rachel Ray's because she's kind of cute and marketing works. While I'm here, I'm going to pick up some salt. Salt's really important. I'm going to grab some sea salt. This is really important to balance all the flavors in your food, so make sure you have a decent salt on hand. All right, so the last thing I always buy when I come to the store outside of ice cream, because it needs to stay frozen, is meat. Meat's 
need, meat needs to stay cold, so it's always the last place that I visit before I start packing up everything. Um, chicken, lots of brands of chicken. I prefer this brand of chicken, Smart Chicken. No antibiotics, um, no water injected, things like that. And you've got your choice about what you want to pick. Uh, a lot of people prefer the chicken breast with the skin off. Um, if that's what you prefer and you're worried about calories, things like that, I'll show you how to cook that later. I'm going to grab some just in case. But I also like chicken legs with the skin on. Chicken legs with the skin on cook really well. They seal in uh, all the juices and things by cooking it slow. And you get a little bit of di different meat texture other than the, the chicken breast. Another thing that I like to buy from my family uh, that my wife really loves is pork tenderloin. Um, it's easy. It's quick. It cooks really nicely. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with it. So I'm going to grab a package of this too. All right, guys, now that we've got everything, we're going to get checked out. We're going to go ahead and head back over to the School of Hotel and Restaurant Administration over on OSU campus, talk about some cooking equipment. We're back in the basic food lab at the School of Hotel and Restaurant Administration, housed in the College of Human Environmental Sciences. And we're back here to talk about equipment, equipment that will make your life easier. Just like every carpenter needs the right tools to make the job easier, we're going to talk about equipment that will make cooking easier uh, and a little more fun and not so, not so frustrating. So I pulled out a few things that every kitchen, in my opinion, should, should have. If you don't have everything on the list, don't worry about running out and buying everything on the list all, all at once. But if you want to, that's always fun too. So let's talk about some pots and pans. You can get a majority of the recipes that we're going to do in the next uh, 10 or 12 weeks done with a, uh, with a few of these pans. We've got what's considered a sauce pot. And the sauce pot is a little bit different than a stock pot. A stock pot is a bigger guy with handles on the side. Sauce pot is a pot with a handle uh, connected, just one handle. In my opinion, you should grab maybe two varying sizes, so one medium, kind of one small. And then we've got saute pans. If you ever read recipes and are confused about what saute pans are or what a skillet is, they kind of do the same job. So if you can grab a saute pan or a skillet, however you want to call it, this is about an 8 inch saute pan. Um, they come in varying sizes. There's 8 inch, 6 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch. Um, if you've got a couple of different sizes, that'll help. The key to these is make sure that they're not too flimsy and too thin. Part of the problem with some of the less expensive pans is when they're too thin and made of all aluminum, they get really hot really quickly and really cold really quickly. And that's when you start to burn stuff. Next one I think you should probably have in the kitchen, and these are really helpful. It's just a good nonstick skillet. That'll help you with a lot of egg preparations, which we'll talk about. Uh, some of the small wares that are, that are pretty essential for some of the recipes, some mixing bowls. You got mixing bowls, get a couple in varying sizes. Uh, decent ones usually are stainless steel. If you don't like stainless steel and you've got ceramic or if you've got wood to some degree, that'll work. Uh, and some of the less uh, heavy gauge stainless steel or the mixes of aluminum and stainless steel will work. For your rice and pasta, make sure you've got a colander. It doesn't have to be this big. This one's a little bit large for a normal kitchen, but uh, any kind of colander. It doesn't really matter. Plastic ones, metal ones, any one will work. Uh, as far as smaller strainer devices, these little small strainer guys come in real handy for a lot of different things that we'll talk about. Make sure you've got some spoons. I like to carry a wooden spoon and a metal spoon. Metal spoons for different jobs with slots so you can pull things out and the water stays in the pan. And a wood spoon so when we use them on reactive surfaces, which we'll talk about in the future, that you're not picking up some of the metal. So a wood spoon is a good thing to have. You also want to have some tongs to grab things. If we've got chicken in the pan or if we've got vegetables and things like that, these are pretty indispensable. Uh, don't worry about buying super expensive ones because they'll probably bend anyway. So just normal tongs from a grocery store will probably work. Rolling pin, when we start talking about baking, got to have a whip. There's a lot of whips on the market. There's some if you go to some of the higher end grocery, or I'm sorry, some of the higher end retail stores where they've got nice kind of uh, spongy handles that are non-heat reactive so you don't burn your hand. Those are good. And then you take a look at the different size of the actual tines. The thinner they are and the more balloon like they are, the better they're going to do for jobs like whisking egg whites. These bigger, thicker ones are more for just mixing things together. So if you're looking for real foamy egg whites, then get the big balloon ones with the little thin tines there. 
Sheet pan. Sheet pans are pretty important. A lot of times you'll see these listed in recipes as cookie sheets. Same thing. This is a half size sheet pan. Uh, obviously two of these together make a full size if you get the big ones. This is where I think you should spend some money and get a nice heavy gauge steel. Uh, if you buy the really flimsy 10 ones, they're going to end up scorching products no matter what you put them on and, and you're going to have disaster. Then we've got some measuring devices. Measuring cups and measuring spoons. It doesn't really matter if they're metal or if they're plastic. I've seen those collapsible ones which are really nice. Doesn't matter which kind you get, just make sure you grab some. Well, I think that's about it for the cooking equipment. For a complete list of all the ingredients that we talked about at the grocery store and all the equipment, go to the OSU website. And make sure and join us next week where we talk about tasty spud recipes right here on Play With Your Food.